Welcome back to Speaking Spurs with me, Kieran, talking all things Tottenham. Thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed recently over the last few days. The channel has really, really grown and it's great to see so many comments and discussions going on below. Um, so if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to support the videos with a like and continue the conversations below with your comments. So today you are being treated to not one, but two videos. I'm going to do this one as a combined um, Watford versus Spurs analysis as well as player ratings then the second video that's coming a bit later is going to be about all the transfer rumors that have come over the last couple of days um, and what i think of them and then you can have your comments below as to what you think of them so let's jump into it and the one nil victory over watford away leaves us sixth in the premier league uh, 33 points on the table two games in hand still on most of the teams above us and if we win both of those, we jump into fourth position, which will take us three points off Liverpool, who sit in third. So for a team that weren't great at the beginning of the season to where we are now, all it's taken is some consistency to really turn it around for us in the Premier League under the stewardship of Antonio Conte with his hard working style. Now, don't get me wrong. We had lots of possession in this game against Watford. Fantastic. However, those issues are still there throughout the squad. Um, and it just goes to show that although we're having a good turn in form, lots of victories, lots of draws, better performances, there is still a bad performance in us. And you might be sitting there saying, but, but was it a bad performance? And it kind of was. It was a very wasteful performance. We come away with one goal from this game, a game that we controlled almost from start to finish. Um, Watford were ridiculously quiet in the first half. Um, two woeful efforts from them. Uh, defensively we were solid but on the break we had so much time so much space and we just couldn't capitalize because our final final ball not just from the two um, wing backs which we'll talk about but also other players either rushing things not taking the right decisions etc so we'll just talk a bit about the first half um, like Watford pretty much offered nothing for the whole first half other than um, Dennis's squandered effort where he'd done all the hard work and then this really tame weak shot goes across um, there was another one from one of the wingers but in that first 15 minutes we had 75% possession as well as 40% um, of our play was in Watford's half in the first 15 minutes that's crazy you'd expect in that time we'd managed to score a goal so although you're happy we're in control the problem is in the Premier League you squander your chances or you don't take complete advantage of the situations you're given, you can get punished. Against Watford, that didn't happen. A team that clearly are struggling. You put that 15 minutes up against, say, a Liverpool, a Chelsea. Chelsea, who we've got three times um, in the next God knows how many games, is ridiculous. You know, the two in the Cup, once in the Premier League. It's, it's crazy. You do that against these teams, you're probably going to get punished. So you need to take your chances. That's why it was so frustrating. I mean, we did have chances within the first half. Um, Hoybier volleying over the bar from near the edge of the box. Um, Kane, lovely swivel on swivel and turn from Cathcart. Wasted that opportunity. Reggion, one from the edge of the box, driven and saved by Barkman. Skip um, made that interception, set up Kane. He curled it just wide. Second half started pretty much the same as well. We're on top. Um, however, Watford did make a change. Dennis came off for Yao Pedro, who was massive for them he really ignited a bit of life and didn't cause us too many problems but gave us something to think about um problem is he was one man and it's not com going to completely change the game for him which it didn't um son had a chance his improvised volley from that chipped ball over the top from lucas moore which barkman again saved um he also tried another one later on with that attempted back hill where him and kane were close to each other didn't quite get proper connection with that um, and then we obviously scored from a free kick, which unfortunately for Watford came from who I thought was their best player in the game. Um, he, he tracked his men really well, made some in, important blocks and tackles. And then he goes in the last like minute and a bit of the game, gives away a free kick and they get punished. It would have been Watford's first clean sheet of the season as well. Didn't happen from Sonny, put the free kick in a great area. Sanchez gets across everybody and headers it in from like a yard out. Um, I'm happy for Sanchez. I think he deserves it. He's been a lot, a, much improved this season um, within the squad. He's fully taken advantage of Romero's injury. 
Um, and it's nice to know that we've got somebody to come in when players are injured that can hold down a spot and play well. So I'm happy for him. Clearly all the players were. They really swamped him. A lot of smiles about um, Hugo Lloris, we've got to mention him in the second half, his save from um, King's curling shot. And I don't think he didn't see it straight away. It was it was hit well from uh, from King. I believe it was uh, Dyer he used to disguise the shot. And Lloris had a lot of goal to cover. When you watch that in slow motion, you realise how well Hugo Lloris did to save that ball. Um, and in a game when he pretty much had nothing to do. So I'm really, really happy with that. So yeah, lots of lots of possession. Poor quality um, and lacking ideas, I felt, from a lot of players. However, I will say at the end of the game, when the whistle went, the celebrations from the Spurs players show you exactly how much it means. And they know this was a game where they underperformed. They they definitely underperformed in a sense of um, taking advantage of the situations we found ourselves in. But what that meant to the players at the end, um, I was really impressed with. There was a lot of passion on their faces. And they know it was a hard game. And they know they made hard work of it. And and to get three points when you haven't played your best is essential. That is how big teams win leagues. I'm not saying we're anywhere near that at the moment. Conte will be the first to admit that as well. But it's nice to see. This is the sort of mentality that we need. And we need to win these games when we're not playing well. So let's move on to the player ratings from the game. Hugo Lloris uh, comes away with an eight. Now, I would have given him a seven. However, I feel like the save... Um, was that crucial to the game he doesn't make that save I'm not sure we even go on to to draw the game let alone win it it was, it was a game of you know poor chances from us that is a crucial save with nothing to do his concentration in that individual moment fantastic not to mention their penalty shout um, when Lloris came rushing out replay show you that he did get um, get his fist onto the ball um, so those two moments completely saved us in this game, a game which we dominated. If we'd have lost because of lapses of concentration from Hugo Lloris, we're, we're talking about a completely different conversation today. So he comes away with an eight just for those two moments within the game, and that's why he deserves a contract. And from the last video, thank you for your comments. A lot of you agree Hugo Lloris deserves at least another year. Some of you saying that you reckon he can still play at the top for three years, which is very interesting. Davinson Sanchez, the, the winner, the goal scorer, he comes away with an eight as well. I think he's played fairly well this season, much better than he has previously. Many of us wanted him gone. I feel like he's put himself in good stead, become a decent squad player for us, if not starter at the moment, in that solid back three that we've got, where we've only, only conceded four goals in eight games, which for Spurs, it's fantastic. I mean, for any team, that's really good. Um, so we only concede one in two. Um, but as well as defending well, he got on the score sheet with that header. So an eight for him. Eric Dyer, the man in the middle, the anchor of the three, comes away with a seven. You know, doesn't set the world alight, but he goes in there. He talks to his defence, communicates well, solid job. Uh, defended well, as he has been recently. And he kept the ball moving forward when he could in that sort of like quarterback position where he tries to ping these balls upfield as and when he can. Uh, ben Davies, the left of the back three, um, seven for him as well. Solid defending as usual. We've become accustomed to this version of Davies now. Uh, supported Reggion as and when he could get him forward on the left hand side. Lots of play goes through him. I, he doesn't get enough credit for his ball playing skills. There's lots of times the ball drifts out to the left, ends up with Davies, and he starts movements. Um, yeah, he's fast becoming a key player for us. Somebody that was always seen as a, a backup or a go-to, um, a solid player to bring in for an injury. He is now a key player in our defence and will probably have changed Conte's mind on some of the signings that he needs. Uh, Emerson Royale comes away of a five. It was a hard game for him, wasn't it? Like He defended fairly well. Um, he was always available. He had very good movement, lots of space. His first touch was pretty good for the majority of the game. However, he can't come away with any more than a five because he had so many opportunities to put the ball into the box into good areas. The amount of times it was slightly over hit, it was under hit, it was behind the players, it was too close to the goalkeeper. I think he was trying way too hard to make sure he got it pinpoint. That It, it just didn't work for him on the day, um, which is a shame. Uh, he did have one that came off uh, near the end of the game, uh, but Kane headed that straight at the, uh, at the goalkeeper. 
but to have as many opportunities as he did throughout the game to get across into a good area and failed, you know, it's a frustration. It's definitely a, a position that we need to look at. Um, and then in the transfer story um, video that's coming out next, we talk about the right wing back, but in terms of quality, I don't think it's an upgrade in the crossing department anyway. Um, then on the other side, Region, he also only comes away with a five. He did force Barkman into that save, um, the flying save with a driven shot from the edge of the box. However, again, poor crossing. And Reguillon's crossing hasn't been as good as it was when he first signed for the club, so I'm disappointed in him as well. But, you know, both did their job defensively, both created space, but they just couldn't take advantage of that and get us over the line. Um, okay, Skippy comes away with a six. I think this is probably the lowest rating that I've given him. Uh, great slide and interception um, to set up Kane on the half hour mark. Um, and Kane obviously didn't score it. He did take a yellow card for the team against Yao Pedro. Uh, replaced by Winks with 20 minutes to go. Um, but in terms of quality from Skippy, probably not his best game. But I think he's allowed an off game every now and again. The amount of energy he puts in. He's played a lot of minutes. He works exceptionally hard. Um, so yeah. Uh, Hoybier next to him. Also only comes away over six. The early volley that he smashed over the bar, um, but he didn't offer much going forward at all. Um, a bit like Skippy, it was a very similar game for both of them. They were, you know, they did their job, but nothing more. They didn't really overextend themselves as much as they normally do. So they've only, they've not got sixes because they were bad. They've got sixes because they weren't at their usual standard, which um, this season for Skippy has certainly been very high. Uh, moving on to our attacking options, Lucas Mora, he only comes away with six as well. Um, lots of direct running from him, which is great, but it was very much that typical Lucas Mora performance that had happened previously to the last few games where done a lot of running, took on players with little to no end product other than the uh, chipped effort over the top for Sonny's improvised volley. Um, yeah, so a six for him. Sonny comes away with seven. Um, yeah, it struggled to impact much of the match. I think a lot of that is actually down to the lack of service that he had. So him and Lucas Moura are very different players. Lucas Moura loves to have the ball dribble at players um, almost all the time, whereas Sonny does a bit of both. He, he, he does that, but he's also the man um, to run on to things. And I feel like the, the quality of the players around him let him down in that aspect. Um, he had that great improvised volley from the Lucas Moura um, chip, which Barkman saved. I, I don't feel like Sonny actually hit it with enough conviction anyway. He also had that effort where he tried to improvise the back heel. Um, probably should have opened it up and gone with his left foot instead, so that's a poor judgment on his part. But even when Sonny is poor, he manages to contribute, and this time it was from the free kick, so he gets the assist for the goal with Sanchez, and, and that is six in six in terms of goal contributions for Sonny. Then Harry Kane, the man through the middle, he comes away with a seven as well. Um, had a lovely touch and turn on 19 minutes, that one against Cathcart. Um, and then curled it to the keeper's hands. He curled an effort just wide on the half hour mark, curled it wide of the left hand post. Um, another lovely touch and turn in the second half, but Barkman saved that as well. A header at the keeper in added time. That was from the only Royale cross that was any good. Um, look, he tried throughout the game, but again, like Sonny, suffered from the little to no service throughout the game, which is why he's come away for seven, just for the amount that he tried. Now for the substitutes, Winksy came on. Um, he comes away for six. Plenty of tenacity. Uh, tried to give us some forward momentum. Didn't have um, perhaps the time he would have wanted to, to affect the game. Um, but definitely tried with the time he had. Then Lo Celso, he comes on, only had 10 minutes to try and impress. He did increase our attacking intent. Um, but, you know, 10 minutes is not enough time to really contribute as much as you want because you've got to get up to speed with the game. And then Brian Hill only came on for a few moments. So Lo Celso and Hill don't actually have time in my eyes to come away with a player rating. They were just kind of winding down the clock substitutions. But that is it. Um, that, that is it for that video there, just talking about the game itself, where that leaves us in the table, and there's your player ratings. Let me know below if you agree with that. Who do you think was the man of the match? Um, based on my player ratings, it could either be uh, Lloris or Sanchez. Both contributed in an equal way. One got the goal, one stopped us from conceding goals. You know, a bit of a toss-up, but I think I am going to give it to uh, Sanchez. 
just because Larice has been very consistent over time. We come to expect that of him, especially since he's been back from his injury from last season. Um, whereas Sanchez has had a bit of a rough ride at Spurs, been in and out the team, never been able to get a consistent slot because of all the rotation under Jose Mourinho. So I think you have to go with him just for how well he has played recently. So I think he deserves it. Let me know down below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? How do you think everybody else performs as a whole? Um, but yeah, we're in a pretty good place in the league. You can't you can't look at the position too much. You just got to look at the points and where we can go. So we're definitely on the up, even with a poor performance like we put in against Watford. We still managed to get a result, which is a sign of the times, I think. So thanks for sticking around. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. And until later on, when you get the um, transfer video, come on, you Spurs. <laughs>